So the project's called Worlds by Women and it's in collaboration with Jackson's Lane. The idea was a project that focused around a hundred years since women got the vote. So we have created three separate plays in three separate schools where we look at female empowerment, what's progressed since 1918 and a kind of golden future where um, all is equal. Well today we've been at Christ College, it used to be a boys only school and they have just recently accepted girls. We've been really interested in the parallels of the changes that happened in 1918 when some of the women got the vote for the first time and thinking about the change that just recently happened in this school. I think kind of getting the whole thing together, I think that's been the most exciting bit. Of course, you know, the whole point of it is to empower females, but actually to work with boys and young men and let them understand the issues that women still face um, really gives them an insight uh, into what's going on. We've been rehearsing a production that we're doing for World War Women. We are doing it about feminism and we're talking about basically the global problem between the gap between women and men. Today we've been in Hornsey School and uh, we've been looking at the play that's actually set in 2018. So we've been rehearsing, we've just been trying to get a bit more of a structure to the play. It's a real ensemble piece and it sort of focuses on an expected trajectory of a woman. The aim of the play is to basically empower women. Nowadays in society we face so many obstacles about, you know, not just our gender but our race, um, what we look like. We're trying to get the audience to understand that no matter what obstacles they may be facing, they, they can achieve their dreams. The process has been really interesting. Not all of the girls are performers. Um, a lot of them are English students or politics students or history students. So actually that's um, you know a wonderful and creative challenge. It just means that we need to think about it in a slightly different way. All these different things women go through, it's actually reality. It could happen to anyone and I want them to realise it so then they can put it in their normal day-to-day -day lives. Yeah, rehearsals have been quite a lot, but I'm actually quite excited because being part of something that can actually change the way people see things is something I want to be part of. For this show, which is at St Thomas More, we had a big discussion um, about what we felt the world might potentially look like 100 years from now. Well, you couldn't hear me before. The process of writing the script was we came up with a whole load of different ideas that we could do to change the future and what we think the future should look like. It's been really brilliant to work with the girls, they're full of energy, they're brilliant and really we're just trying to consolidate all the ideas because it's getting close to the performance and we need to make sure that everything's ready. It's also been fantastic because I've had my daughter with me to explore and work with these amazing girls and talk about this future that we hope will be full of equality. It's been really special because, you know, we're basically making waves for her future. Welcome. 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 Girls, are sh they're making a change already and they're exactly. so excited and so, out, so that made me really happy. Detention, detention. For what, man? Detention! <laughs> My students have benefited in a number of ways. They've had to go away and employ those skills of self-discipline, to work hard, to learn their scripts and to then have the confidence to project that. So I'm really proud of them. Boy, girl, black, white, tall, medium or small. Should it matter what type of person should be in our school? Depending on the person's characteristic or trait, this is a topic we can all debate. I think it's really important to celebrate this centenary because our history is essentially who we are. It's so easy to just forget about past history, so yep. the more we keep speaking on it, the more it's embedded in people's minds and the yep. more people are going to be like, you know what, let's make a change. Yes. It's 2018. Yeah, baby. <laughs> also, if you don't mind, after eight months, they move in together. They cook, clean, even make plans for the future, which involves conversations about you, what you'd look like. It's a really provocative performance. The women who are performing ask a lot of questions of the audience and really challenge your preconceptions around gender equality and the issues that feed into that. It was love at first sight. Or well, so he thought. 
most of the girls are in my tutor group. It was really interesting to me to see how their true voice shone through in uh, their performances. Just having a voice and being part of something where everyone is expressing their own inner thoughts about something, it's very cool. <laughs> Could it be because of? No! You're so wrong. I hope it's not because of? No! You're, You're so wrong! It's the 21st century. We have equality. The play was incredible, it was really unique. You felt like you were part of it, taking your shoes off and using the torches. Torches on if you think that women have to be kinder to each other. Torches on if you feel that men and women are not treated equally. I think it's important to celebrate the centenary of suffrage because I just I can't believe that you would, would not give half the population the vote. It's very interesting to learn about the things that people have done back in the day to get to where we are now. Changing who you are means you'll fit in. Changing who you are means you'll fit in. Changing who you are. Changing who you are. We're, all of us, men and women, uh, and anyone in between, are standing on the shoulders of giants, people in the suffragists and the suffragette movement, uh, who fought for those rights and thereby set an example for how we can get social change. Hi, welcome to the Equality Exchange Clinic. 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 Hi, welcome to the Equality Hi, can you please read that for me? Of course. Thank you! <laughs> we shared personal experiences through the play that came across through the script. Hi, what did you say? Um, I'd like to give up my fear of walking alone at night. Fear of walking alone at night? Mm, why? Uh, because I'm tired of feeling vulnerable. Vulnerable? <laughs> As we know, a hundred years ago, some women got the vote. But it's wonderful to look back over those hundred years and also to see young women now being able to communicate very clearly about how they want to see change. In the future, I pledge to empower women. In the future, I pledge to be more appreciative and supportive of women. Well, I've learned that from today, it's, we shouldn't speak and treat women like in a negative and a lower way than to how we would want, for example, our daughters or our mum to be treated. Every time I see a white van, I get scared. Same. Why? Because today could be the day when you get not. I think I've bonded a lot um, with girls that I wouldn't necessarily speak to. Uh, working with someone, you know, on a professional level, I've never worked with a director before or anything like that. I'm going to miss it. the project and I feel completely elated and absolutely shattered. Um, it's been an extraordinary thing to have made three separate plays in three separate schools with three separate casts. Each evening we've had a really exciting, um, invigorating conversation with two key influential women and all these young people. If we as a generation come together and uplift women and empower women, there will be a change. As a choir activist, Doing the things that I can do, I feel so proud that we've been able to make the ripples that make the waves that make the change.